Hey gang, this is Mr. Schmidt, coming to you week nine. I was October 27th. Um, so just finished the quiz and now we're talking about forces and balanced forces. Um, tomorrow we'll talk more about getting ready for our next project, which is a pumpkin drop, or you could use an egg um, if you can't get a pumpkin. I know right now is a good time to get deals on pumpkins. They will be pulled out of the stores um, after Halloween. So if you want to get one, get one right away. Um, the idea is we're going to be dropping something in a box and uh, calculating and measuring forces um, on the box and on the object inside. So if you get those materials together, you'll be ready for this weekend. All right, so we're talking forces right now and getting ready for an assignment. Um, there are two videos that are worth watching along the way. I'm not going to play those. You can watch those at your own time. Uh, the first one is a nice little inertia activity. It's played for elementary schoolers, but it uh, shows the physics pretty well. Um, what we're looking at today is really Newton's laws, or an object at rest will remain at rest until acted upon by an unbalanced force, which is going to be important for the assignment, that term unbalanced force. An object in motion will at constant velocity will continue at the same velocity until acted upon by an unbalanced force. Constant velocities, by the way, can be any number, including zero velocity is a constant velocity. Okay. All right, so uh, in terms of physics test, um, I've not graded it. I expect the biggest problems with the physics test are going to be minus signs, parentheses, uh, one or two people might have I forgot to switch from radians to degrees. Um, so if you showed your work, that might uh, lose you one out of the four points. If you don't show your work and you still make the mistake, um, you might be in, on track to lose all the points. So please show your work. Please keep uh, track of your minus signs. Okay. Um, so Newton's laws, there's three of them. The first one, inertia, uh, the resistance of an object has to state of motion. Okay, so this is a more uh, definitive way of looking at mass. Okay, so mass and weight. Uh, weight really depends on the force of gravity. So your weight on Earth is different than your weight on the moon, which is not very useful when we do things like chemistry or physics and we're trying to uh, keep things constant and see how do things uh, apply across the universe. Okay. Um, weight is fairly good as long as we stay on the same elevation at the same point on Earth, um, then our weight and our mass are fairly synonymous. But the fact is if we go up high or we go to the center of the Earth, um, we're going to see some very differences between weight and mass. And inertia is one of the best ways to measure mass and to discuss mass, okay, based on its state and motion. Okay, so the big one is Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. He phrased it slightly differently when Newton first proposed this, um, but this is gonna work out best for us. In fact, we're gonna look at the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration will be a more accurate way to say this. Okay, and then the third law for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So that means if I'm pushing on the floor with, I don't know, a thousand Newtons, then a thousand Newtons is pushing back on me, okay? Um, so there will always be an equal and opposite reaction. Even if I'm falling through the floor and the floor can only push on me with 800 Newtons, then I'm pushing on the floor with 800 Newtons. And that difference, that extra 200 would equate into my acceleration. So for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So these three laws set up what is something as a very simple uh, phrasing um, and definitions, but in application can get uh, more and more complicated. So we'll start, of course, with our simplest scenarios, and then we'll keep adding um, different variations to try to uh, account for more and more realistic situations. Okay, um, so as we start with this, we start with the simplest scenario, just a dot. Okay, so a, a dot is our object. We can, this can be the center of mass of me. It can be the center of mass of a car or a cow or a rocket ship or a galaxy, whatever it is. Um, in this case, it's something that's on earth. So we have the force of gravity pulling 
the object down and it has sitting on some sort of uh, floor or a table or something and there's some normal force pushing back against it, okay? And it has an applied force to one direction which um, also seems to have some motion in that direction because friction always opposes motion, okay? So if the, these forces are not balanced, then there's gonna be some acceleration in this direction. So it could be moving this way and it can be accelerating this way um, if there's unbalanced forces. Now, if these two are balanced, then it is gonna be moving this way, but it is not accelerating this way, okay? Um, but the only new way I know which way the motion is, is based on friction because friction opposes motion. If it's, this is not in the diagram, then I have to look at the question to see what motion is. Okay, so I spend my time on Reddit, um, and this is one of those great memes that has Newton's second law. That's the big cat uh, in all this. Um, Newton's first law and third law, third law are still there, but they're just not the big cat that the second law is in terms of calculations. Okay, so this is a classic example of we have a force, we have some normal force pushing up and force of gravity pushing down. But the question is, um, what can we tell from this scenario, okay? Okay, so I'm gonna take that scenario, I'm gonna draw it out here. Uh, first of all, let's make sure we have our correct units so that we get Newtons. But if we're looking at our drawing here, um, what we're gonna see is that certain things can be applied to this drawing, okay? So this is the basics of their drawing. So they called it MG. I'm gonna call it the force of gravity, which is mass times gravity, okay? This is gonna generate a negative number. We have a normal force pushing up. The normal force, it's important, is always perpendicular to the surface, okay? Um, and then you have some sort of applied force in one direction. So if these two are equal and opposite, then we're gonna get our sum of our forces in the y direction equals zero, okay? Um, and we're gonna see that quite often. Then we look at these two forces or any forces in the x direction, and we're gonna add up or sum all of those forces in the x direction, and that's gonna tell us our acceleration in the x direction. Notice that what it does not tell us is velocity. Okay, we have no idea what the velocity is in the X. So this is a case, the velocity can be going this way, motion can be going that way. We don't know. This whole thing can be in an elevator and it can be going up and down. All we know is there's no acceleration in the Y and there is acceleration in the X. We do not know anything about its velocity or its position based solely on this, okay? So that was our first um, graph or picture. And then we had our second one, um, which looks a lot like our dot diagram, okay? So first of all, because there's friction, friction always opposes motion, okay? So these are different units, so I try to make sure we're not implying that this number tells us anything about the motion, but we know because of this, there's motion. And in fact, if there is a lot of friction, the acceleration could be negative. We could have a deceleration or slowing, but the force of friction is still opposing motion, okay? So if we had the purple scenario here, if we had a little bit of friction and a lot of pulling, okay? Then we'd have a positive force in the X, okay? Which would mean this would be some positive number as well and that our velocity would be increasing. If these two are equal and opposite, then we're gonna have zero net force in the Y, zero acceleration in the Y and constant velocity in the Y. Again, you could be on an elevator going up and down, um, but it's either always going up at a constant speed or always going down at a constant speed. 
or sitting still at a constant speed, okay? So as long as it's constant, that's all we know, and we don't know um, what our position is, okay? So that is the start of it. Now, um, kind of preview for the lab we had, okay? Um, when we were drawing the something falling off the table or drawing uh, the diver, we always had the same diagram, right? We had a nice parabolic arc, okay? So you were throwing it or you're hitting it and then you let go and then you get this nice parabolic shape and then you catch it and the parabolic shape falls off here. So for one uh, period of time here, we have uh, the parabolic shape holds true, okay? So from that entire time when it left your hand till you caught it, um, it was parabolic. This could also be done in an airplane where some, the airplane goes up and then it comes back down. Or if you're on a roller coaster, okay? I've not been on an airplane like this, but I have been on a roller coaster. Roller coaster goes super fast and it goes up and your stomach goes, ugh, because your stomach is falling at the same rate that your body is falling at the same rate the roller coaster is falling and you feel your stomach is up higher than it normally is. It doesn't have any of that um, pressure from the lower part of your body pushing your stomach back up, okay? So everything is falling at the same rate for this entire time. And then you come out of the roller coaster and you feel all sorts of forces pushing on you, on the seat of your pants, and then from the, you know, the seat of your pants all the way up into your stomach and then up into your head. And all that is applying more force down here, okay? So NASA very early on learned they can do this with an airplane and they can get 20 or 30 seconds here, okay? Of an airplane going up and everyone is falling at the same rate the airplane is falling is, and the air is falling and everything in the airplane is falling and everything experiences the exact same arc. And so it feels just like zero gravity for this entire time. And then they can just keep doing this over and over with the airplane and they can do it six, 10 times um, in the airplane before they have to refuel again. So obviously getting the airplane going fast enough and climbing to a great enough speed um, can really use a lot of fuel, okay? And then like an, a lot of things in NASA, um, we've eventually started working with the Soviets and now the Russians and realized that the Russians are, are doing the same thing and we could save a lot of money if only one of us did it. So the Russians have these airplanes, they actually have a commercial airplane that does this. And that's where the um, OK Go video takes place. It's inside a Russian plane. But what would happen if um, this wasn't just with the earth down here, okay? Normally on an airplane, here's the earth. What would happen if we expanded this out so much that this is the earth? Okay. All right, then as you fall, the earth falls away at the same rate Okay, and then instead of having to pull up, you would just keep falling towards the earth, but the earth's not there anymore, and you just keep falling towards the earth, and the earth's not there, and you just keep going around and around. Okay, and you'd be in orbit, and that's what the International Space Station feels like. So they keep falling, but the International Space Station keeps falling, and their lunch keeps falling and whatever experiments they're working on keeps falling and the toilet keeps falling and everything in there keeps falling. So they do not experience the gravitational force because they don't experience any normal force pushing back up, okay? Because everything's falling at the same rate, okay? And so with that reference frame, things change, okay? So um, that's one of the key side notes for all of this. All right, and then um, let's stop this one. I'm gonna do a separate video to do some examples on the questions.